Hey, what's up guys? It's Scum, back with another Top 50 Albums of 2016 video for you. Today we're going to be doing albums number 30 to 21, so let's get right into it. At number 30, this is Phobocosm with Bringer of Drought. Uh, I just saw these guys a few nights ago at St. Vitus Bar in Brooklyn. Uh, talked to them briefly at their merch table. Really humble, really nice guys from Montreal. Uh, they play a modern style of death metal, very deep, growling vocals, a uh, little bit of technical guitar work, and the drumming is just outstanding. Um, if you like modern death metal bands like, say, Grave Miasma or Dead Congregation, I think you're going to like Phobocosm. So check out their new album, Bringer of Drought, on Dark Descent Records. And number 29... Chemists Hunted. Uh, a lot of people will say that 29 is probably too low for this album, but I really liked their previous work, Absolution, more than this album. Not to say that this is a bad album, but Absolution just did a little bit more for me. Uh, the, the song Candlelight on this album, followed by Three Gates, really nice one-two punch on this album. Uh, love the packaging on this. They got the foil stamped logo and album title. The artwork is incredible. This wizard guy has kind of become their logo or their uh, mascot, if you will. I was pretty shocked to see that this got number one album of the year in Decibel Magazine, but, you know, every year they kind of pick a, a band to dick ride. Uh, this year it was Nails. I'm surprised that Nails didn't get number one on their list, but... Uh, this is still a really good album. I know a lot of you out there probably have it higher on your list, but it comes in at number 20 mine on mine, Chemist Hunted. At number 28, Death Fortress, Deathless March of the Unyielding. This is a black metal band from my home state of New Jersey, and they play a very interesting style of black metal. It's uh, black metal for fans of death metal, I would say. Um, they add some really deep growling vocals in there along with the, you know, the traditional high pierced vocals that you will hear in black metal. And it's very aggressive, very in your face, uh, not for the weak of heart. Really cool album. Again, guys from New Jersey, gotta represent. Uh, definitely check out Death Fortress, Deathless March of the Unyielding. And then number 27, this is Protector, Cursed and Coronated. Uh, this was released on High Roller Records, comes on a really cool gold vinyl. And these guys are from Germany, they play a nice mixture of death metal and thrash metal. They've been around for a long time, uh, one of their older albums, A Shedding of the Skin, is one of my favorite death thrash albums ever. And uh, uh, it's great to see them, you know, still trucking here in 2016 and releasing really good albums. Uh, this album I really like, the title track to Kirsten Coronated. Uh, look that one up. If you like that one, you'll like the rest of this album. Check out their older stuff too, uh, stuff like Gollum, uh, Leviathan's Desire. Protector is a really awesome band. Definitely check this one out. At number 26... We've got Beastmaker with Lucis Nature. I think that's how you pronounce it, but we'll go with that. And uh, Beastmaker labeled themselves as Fresno Horror Doom. They're from Fresno, California. They play doom metal. Heavy, heavy Sabbath worship on this one. Uh, there's a lot of bands doing that stuff nowadays, but Beastmaker really excel at that. This is their first full-length album. And I can't wait to see what's in store for these guys. Uh, really promising debut album. Evil stuff on here. Eyes are watching. Uh, you Must Sin. Burnt Offering. Uh, this album sounds like it could have been released in like the late 70s, early 80s. So if you like that retro heavy metal sound, definitely check out Beastmaker if you haven't already. Number 25 on my list. This is Ergahol. Aeons in Sodom. A little backstory on this, their vocalist Trondor Nefas passed away back in 2012. So this will wind up being the final album from Ergahol. And um, 
they did something really cool, which is they got a whole bunch of guys from the black metal scene and the you know underground metal scene in general to contribute to this album. Uh, the brothers from Sadistic Intent played guitar on a couple of tracks, and then they have a wide range of guest vocalists, uh, a who's who of black metal, guys like Nocturno Culto from Dark Throne, Nag from Suter, Nata Frost from Carpathian Forest, Nicholas Kvarforth from Shining, Host from Tolke. Uh, this is going to be a, a really fine swan song for this band and a very fitting tribute to their fallen brother. I really like this album. Uh, it doesn't really feel like a um, like they hired a whole bunch of different musicians to contribute to this album. The songs still flow very smoothly. It doesn't feel like a compilation of songs very much so. So I really like this album and it's really cool that they did that. Erg Hall, Aeons and Sodom. 24, Ritual Chamber, Obscurations to Feast on the Seraphim. Uh, this one came out on Profound Lore Records. I have this nice white vinyl with gray and black splatter. This one was limited to 100, so I'm glad I picked that up. And uh, Ritual, play, R Ritual Chamber play a uh, doomed out style of death metal. If you're into bands that do that kind of style, like Dizma or Incantation, Ritual Chamber, definitely a cool band to check out. Should be right up your alley. Uh, really cool stuff on here. This album got a lot of spins for me in 2016. All right, getting down to the second half of the list. We've got 23, Baptism. This is five, The Devil's Fire. Baptism is a Finnish black metal band, been around for a while, and if you like Finnish black metal, there's really not much to dislike on this album. Um, this is their fifth full-length album. Really cold, bitter type black metal. Uh, they mix in a little bit of clean vocals, and I know that that'll scare some people off, but they're really low in the mix and kind of create a sort of atmosphere and a little bit of a creepy vibe to it, which I really like. And if you've listened to Baptism's previous releases, it's not something that they haven't experimented with before. So it's not going to catch you off guard if you're a fan of Baptism. But, you know, if you're true or cult and you don't like clean sung vocals, Whatever, man. Uh, baptism. Five, The Devil's Fire. At number 22 on my list, Temple Nightside with the Hikatum. Hikatum. I don't know. I'm bad with pronunciations. But this came out on Iron Bonehead. Fantastic label. This band is from Australia. And they play a very, very, just really brutal death black metal mixture. Uh, this album was very high up on my list when it first came out. Got a lot of spins from me. Uh, this band is just so dark and evil and the vocals just sound like they're scraped out of a dungeon in hell. I mean, I can't say enough good things about this album. Uh, in all reality, it probably should have been higher on my list, but there's a lot of albums that came out this year that I absolutely loved and just put a little bit higher. So, at number 22, Temple Night Set. And then at number 21, sadly, I don't have the record to show you, but it's going to be Death Spell Omega with... The Synarchy of Molten Bones. Now, I ordered the record from Napalm Records. That is an Austrian record label. Takes a long time for records in some European areas to get here to the US. So, I was hoping it would get here in time for this video, but it's not going to stop me from doing this video. So, I'll just talk about it a little bit. Um, Deathspell Omega, a black metal band from France. They, uh, gets slapped with the avant-garde label, uh, which is appropriate, but I feel that sometimes when people label bands as avant-garde, they immediately think, ooh, avant-garde, unique, uh, this is gonna be great. And uh, that may not always be the case, but it certainly is true with Deathspell Omega. Uh, they've been doing it on their past few releases, 
And the synarchy of Molten Bones kind of crept up on me. I had no idea that Death Spell Omega was working on new music. So I found out about it. Uh, people were posting about it online. Immediately checked it out. Um, and it's just amazing stuff. I mean, the, the talent required to write this kind of music and have the music still be, you know, listenable and good and get repeat listens out of it. Uh, that's a quality that you're not going to find in most bands who try and play this kind of music. So for Death Spell Omega to come out with an album like The Synarchy of Molten Bones is just, you know, they make it seem effortless, but in all reality, it's so difficult and just an amazing album. I can't wait to get it in my hands and give that record a ton of spins because I'm sure it will. So that comes to the end of records number 30 to 21 on my top 50 albums of 2016 list. The next video will be for albums 20 to 11, and then we get to my vaunted top 10 list. So if you've been watching these videos, again, I appreciate it so much. Thanks a lot. Stay tuned for my next video, and this is a lot of fun, guys. Stay tuned. Thanks a lot.